you remember NSX is when they first came out, there was a class action lawsuit against them for tire wear. One of the problems that I had in 91 was the factory recommended toe was six or eight millimeters, you know, and a very soft tire. And for people 3,000 miles of street driving, your tire could be totally bald. So their fix ultimately was just changing the spec on it. They dialed it back to three millimeters, you know, on it. They did it to basically because it was a mid-engine car and they were worried about handling issues. They wanted to make it very safe and, you know, things like that and eliminate any oversteer problems. But um, that's a lot of tow. That's a lot of tow in the car. All right. Any, any questions about tow? Yes. So we're still talking rear. Front's the same. Well, no, no, I mean, it, it, as far as the spec, if you have too much tow in the rear, it's in the turns that it screws you up, right? Right. So it, I mean, you got drag it's straight drag. line, which yeah. is tire wear. And you don't want to tow out in the rear because it'll give you a lot of oversteer it's coming like, out. It's very unstable. Right? Very it's unstable. Go, it just right. takes off. The, the, front, the front is different. The, the front, to some degree, is preference. Jack likes to tow out in his car because he likes a sharper turning in the front. The Lotus spec is zero plus or minus a half a millimeter is what they say in the, in the front. I like a little tow in because when I get tow out in a car, and a Porsche was even more so, they can get darty under braking because what happens when you brake, the compliance in the bushings, will, you know, when you have a braking force like this, you know, you're going forward, you stop the wheel, the wheels are going to want to move outwards under braking. So they tend to want to go tow out under braking anyways. So the car loses some of its tracking and it will tend to follow crowns of road and imperfection more under braking. The benefit of tow out though for turn in is the inner wheel starts turning more than the outer. So you get a sharper, a sharper turn in on it. And in general, rear drive cars um, run zero to some tow in. Front drive cars actually, if you look at it as a bad one, run tow out in the front. And does anybody know why you run in a front drive car? Well, when you're applying drive, right. it wants to go in. Exactly. So you're turning it. Down. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Front drive cars, because the wheels are driving it, the natural tendency when these wheels are powered is to push the front of the tires in. So how they compensate is statically they tow them out. So then under power, the, the tires basically go straight ahead. That's just from the drivers at perception. It, it's, it, it's just from the torque. You know, just, uh, of course, if you're, if you're decelerating, then they go to out. They go the other way. Yeah, so yeah. and that's all that yeah, yeah. compliance and, you know, depending on the car. Now, your tow gauge there, you want to be center line, right? Well, yeah, this is about... Tilt that a little? No, it, it, this is about 12 and it's very close. Theoretically, there'd be a little bit of a difference. If you wanted to get really fancy, what yeah. you could do is put a mark here, a mark here, and then measure exactly, you know, what that distance is. It really doesn't matter, you know, you're, you're probably talking thousands of an inch. You want to be kind of close to the center line. Yeah, and this, this, this gauge is, it's about 12 and a half. Most of these wheels are about 24, 25 inches. Um, so, yeah, that, and again, you, you measure the front the same way. Any other questions on, on tour cam? I don't know which side is well, that's what we're going to talk about over here. Okay. That, well, all we can do with a gauge like this, a tow gauge, oh. is get total tow. What we can't do is find out, and we'll get in a minute, we have another little diagram. Yes. You want to show this one around the professional camera? Oh. Hey. Oh, this, yeah. Uh, these are the old race cars here. Yeah, this, again, I don't know how you zero this. You can zero it off the uh, ground. You've got a massive equipment device and you level it. Okay. It's yeah. the same thing. This is the old like, race car gauge. You go right to the hub. They have a level, actually, and then a calibrating wheel that you would dial. You, you index this off the floor or a level surface, I assume. You zero it. And then you would turn the dial until you're back to zero. And that will tell you how many degrees you are. And, yeah. it'll do and then, then this says, 
this caster. Yeah, I, I don't I, we want to get into measuring caster because it gets a little more confusing. Yeah, and this yeah, this is they've got a caster uh, that's the yeah. magnetic one. Yeah, those are nice. Yeah, that's the problem with them. The question is what do you how do you know it's a target? Okay, that we, we included the specs on it. Um, the cat well caster on these cars runs about what, three and a half degrees. Yeah, and very we're just playing with it right now. Jack played with it, and yeah, I did a little on my car changing them. Um, the work we're not sure on the work reward ratio on it. Most of the, if your car steers and, and tracks straight, these lotuses. Uh, you can't change a lot of the caster. I think Andy you got what one degree or less than one one degree. Yeah, yeah. Um, caster real quickly for and there's a sheet that explains it really well. If you're looking at a wheel straight on, you have two pivots here. You have an upper and lower ball joint. One's up here, one's down here. Now this wheel, and we'll say this is the front of the car going this way. If this center line of this ball joint is behind the center line of the front ball joint that's positive caster. The further you move this center line back, the more caster effect you're putting in the wheel. And if you think of a grocery cart wheel, that's caster. The center line of the pivot is way ahead of the center line of the wheel, and that wheel will follow. Well, it's just the opposite on a car. The reason why they put caster in there is so a car goes straight. The more caster you get in, the more steering effort you get, and the straighter the car. The people why in race cars they play with caster is it allows you to gain negative camber in a corner without having to put as much in it statically. Because the downside of going extreme negative camber is when you go in a straight line, in essence, your contact patch gets smaller. So you're breaking can get tougher and things like that. By doing it with caster, it allows you to pick up more negative camber in a corner. The downside of it is caster weight jacks a wheel. What we can show you on this car is if we, we take the corner balance and we turn the wheel, you turn the wheel to the left, the caster will increase the, the weight on the left wheel and increase it on the, right, uh, uh, the left front and right rear it'll decrease the weight here and decrease it on the outside front. So the more caster you put into a car, the more weight jacking you're doing with it in a corner, which can be detrimental. So all of these things are compromises. It's a matter of feel and what you like, and that's why it's nice to be able to do it yourself, Jack. Yeah, and if you ever go to an alignment shop, you know, the fancy laser, whatever, the hunter machines, they rarely, they rarely play with your caster. Yeah, they can give sure. you a reading. The only time they ever play with it is if the car's in an accident and maybe there's some suspension damage and they we'll check it, but they rarely change it. Okay. Uh, yes. So you're saying that it's good to have both in, both front and rear? Yeah. Well, Lotus spec, uh, toe in the rear about approximately three millimeters. Again, it's in the, in the lead behind we gave you. Um, the factory specs, the front around zero on, on these cars. Again, but it, it, if you track for street driving, it, frankly, it doesn't make that big a difference. You know, uh, a half in, a half out, you're, you're probably not going to feel a big difference. On the track, if you track a car, you get into these subtle differences that, you know, in the faster you get, the subtle differences become more important. Um, and people have their preference, you know. Uh, I go for it. I gotta leave a lot of room for error because I make a lot of mistakes. So I, I don't like a car overly twitchy. Uh, people that are really on top of it um, like really quick turn in. Uh, they, they run less coal in the front, and you know. And the, the, oh. Okay.